Hi everyone, uh, this is uh, Mike uh, reporting on my uh, final year project uh, work. I'll try and keep this video fairly short and sweet. It's just going to be kind of a, an update and a short tutorial of how to use uh, MathWork Iteration 1. The situation is that I'm starting to run out of time to complete my uh, final year project. I've been able to create uh, Iteration 1, uh, which is what I'll be showing you today, uh, but unfortunately the rest of my time at university and working will be to work on the project report. So for the time being iteration one's been released and it's right here as you can see at the minute there's a window with a couple of menus around the sides. So what I'm going to do is take you through all of the features of this iteration of the uh, of map work. In the future I hope to develop this uh, project after university and add uh, additional features in ad additional iterations that I never got around to completing. Uh, but for now this is what uh, you can play around with. Uh, if you'd like to use this editor, go to mapwork.co.uk forward slash editor and um, you'll be presented with this screen here. Uh, a few sort of uh, notes I have to get out of the way before I start the tutorial. You need the latest version of the browser you wish to use. So we're talking IE 10. The newest version of Firefox, uh, Chrome 21 upwards, the newest Opera, uh, it works on Safari. The only thing, the only sort of platforms it doesn't really work on is the older browsers and on tablets at the moment. Although if you wanted to view it in a tablet it would still scale correctly. So now that that's out of the way we'll uh, proceed to the tutorial. So first and foremost, uh, uh, this is a tool for creating tile maps, 2D tile maps. So we go up to the star here, which is the create menu on the left, hit the button, and we present it with a dialog. So the first thing to do is to give the map a name, so we'll call it new map. At the moment uh, there aren't any projects, so just leave that as the default project. Hit next. Now we select how many tiles we'd like along the map and how many we like down the map. Essentially we're just uh, defining the dimensions of the map. So we'll just go for 32 along and uh, 64 down. Okay. So now uh, a grid has been uh, generated for the map uh, area. Uh, I should say that at the minute uh, iteration 1 is restricted to strictly 32 by 32 pixel tiles, but that will improve in future iterations. It's just uh, for demonstration purposes at the moment. So, um, here is the grid. This is where you can lay your tiles. By using the arrow keys on the keyboard, you're able to move around the world. So if I uh, hit down, I'm able to move down and up. I'm able to move up. It's not very easy to see at the moment because I haven't uh, laid any uh, tiles down. Uh, okay, so let's do that. I've just hit the uh, build menu to the left and now this context sensitive uh, build a sub menu has appeared. Firstly, we're going to lay some tiles. So I hit the palette, which is basically just the palette here, and uh, it might take a little bit for the assets to load up the first time around you load them in. Uh, okay, so I'm going to select the brush to lay tiles, and I can select a tile type. I'm going to go for these bricks here. So now what I can do is I can just drag over my uh, cursor to the uh, world. And if I uh, left click, a tile gets placed. If I keep my uh, left button down, I'm able to drag and draw lines, as you'd expect from any good map editing tool. So we can uh, drag additional tiles onto the canvas, and even more. And we can move around the world, as you can see here, moving around the world. Uh, the tiles stay in their respective locations. Uh, not only can we uh, paint tiles, we can also use the flood fill tool. Now that's represented by the bucket right here. So we click on the bucket and we select a tile type. Go for one that hasn't been used. So now I can um, fill in this white area here just by clicking on a part of the, uh, the area just by uh, clicking and all of the Blank areas now been filled in, or alternatively, I can use the flood fill tool to kill colour in a, a pattern. So I'll choose the green tile and go over 
an area that needs filling in. And as you can see here, the flood fill has filled in that area. I just proceeded to do that several times. Again, moving around the world, the towers have now been filled in. Um, towers can be deleted as well, um, which will be kind of ignored by the renderer. And that's how that works. Uh, and finally, we have area select. Just hit the area select button there. Uh, select something that you'd like to copy and paste. And you now have a stencil which you can place on another part of the map. Just click that and it clicks into place. We'll move on to layers now, which uh, can be selected from the layers uh, menu here. Now at the moment there is only one layer uh, using uh, the default tile set. I can do several things. I can select a different tile set from the menu by going down to the drop down. Right. As you can see here, uh, using a different tile set, the tiles that uh, match up to the uh, tile codes in the other tile set have now uh, replaced the original tiles with with uh, these re with, uh, replacements on the other tile sheet. And this happens when you cycle through different tile uh, sets. Um, here are the different tile sets. Or here is the, the different tile set and the different tiles. And uh, once again, you can select a tile set and um, the tiles are laid on the canvas. Um, if you select a tile which is uh, has a tile code in this tile map or this tile set, uh, but then decide to change to a smaller tile set, such as this one, uh, you, the data in the background still is maintained. Uh, because there aren't any tiles of that tile code in this particular tile sheet, um, they don't display as visible. But when you go back to the tile set that you had originally, they are displayed. So you don't lose any data by changing tile sheet. However, your uh, tiles that you um, the uh, uh, out of the range of the new tile set uh, won't be won't be visible until uh, a tile sheet with that uh, tile code is is selected. We can also change the name of the layer Do you say foreground layer just by hitting the pencil and then hitting it again uh, we can disable the visibility of the layer and re-enable it we can even delete the layer which I'll do in two seconds right so now we have a layer over the top of the um, of the foreground layer we can select a tile layer with a different tile set and we can place tiles using the tools over the top of the uh, other uh, tile set. Uh, these layers can be switched around using the arrow keys or using the uh, arrow buttons rather at the bottom of the screen. So basically you can have foreground layers, background layers, uh, you can add up to five layers using map work. If you try and do more than that then you do get a warning from the notification system saying that you may only have to, up to five layers. Um, you can delete layers, so let's delete a layer. As you can see there, the content disappeared because uh, the layer was deleted. I can hide the visibility of each layer, leaving only the top layer which has nothing on it. Or I can enable the bottom layer which has uh, some tiles on it. Uh, so as you can see, you can add, remove, uh, disable the visibility of edit the name of, change the tile set of, and move around each uh, layer on the, on the um, tile map. Um, another interesting feature to, to, to mention is tile properties. Uh, a tile map um, may need to describe some metadata about the tile map to the uh, game that's, been, uh, that's using the tile map. So you're able to do that basically by uh, selecting which scope you would like the property to be set at. Uh, you can have it in map scope, which basically t t uh, encompasses the entire map. And right here now we have a, a menu here where you can enter a key and a value. So we'll put something like for the map. Uh, we'll give it a special name maybe. Special name. <laughs> and give it a value. Uh, so we could call it something like uh, dungeon level. Uh, 
and we could say something like uh, start zone start tile and provide some kind of coordinate essentially these are just key value pairs which are uh, loaded in as, as a strings so uh, you can use properties to basically define any kind of metadata that uh, your uh, map might need to uh, describe to uh, the the uh, game engine that the map is used by. That's for a uh, map scope. We can also uh, do it by layer scope, so that uh, the property only applies to one single layer. So we'll select untitled layer three, and maybe call this a uh, uh, collision layer. Property collision and then put like true. Now what you could do here is uh, you could lay out a series of tiles and say that all non-zero tiles are uh, solid tiles and all uh, zero tiles or minus one tiles, i.e. blank tiles, uh, have collision properties. Um, or additional rules such as uh, death tiles and then put a value of maybe say three in you could uh, tell uh, your uh, respective engine that all tiles that are of tile code 3 uh, will cause damage to the player. Uh, you could even go as far uh, to kind of define additional rules such as uh, death tiles, tiles, uh, death tiles hit points, or death points damage. 23. So essentially you can feed any kind of information about the map uh, on a layer by layer basis to the uh, game engine or rendering engine that uh, you're uh, using for your projects. Um, it's a fairly simple mechanism, there isn't any kind of representation on the map at the moment but it's useful to have if you want to send some properties to your uh, to your uh, map files. Uh, like I said this is scoped on a layer by layer basis so you can go through each layer and properties will exist for different ones. So. It just takes the types in random here. Uh, if you'd like to delete a property, you simply delete the property name and it disappears. Delete the value and it doesn't disappear because that can count as basically the blank uh, value for a key. So uh, if anything needs to be deleted from the list of properties, delete the key and the value will disappear as well. Okay, so for uh, tile properties, we can uh, select a specific tile of a specific layer. Uh, you have to have the selected layer selected, first of all. So we'll select the foreground layer, and we will select a tile on that by hitting the magnifying glass. Uh, selecting a tile on the map. Tool is not enabled. Oh, we haven't selected scope, so you have to select scope, select uh, using the magnifying glass, and then find a tile you wish to add a property to. And then the menu will appear. And you can put something like ooh, uh, warp zone. Warp zone to a start. And put something, let's put something like true. And then maybe we could have another another rare. Uh, another uh, tile to say warp zone end. And now you can basically go to any tile, <laughs> I always forget which one it is, uh, to any tile and select properties and add and remove properties just as you would with layers and with maps in general. Okay so that's properties covered. A few more sort of additional features to mention. Uh, in the settings menu you can resize a tile map. Uh, it must be noted that tile maps can range in sizes up to, uh, I think it's 16,800 and I can't remember the exact number, let's trigger the error. <laughs> so put in a 1000 by 64 map in and as you can see here, you can have map sizes of up to 16,384 and it gives you a guide of what that uh, dimension is, uh, 128 by 128 or 512 by 32, any combination that adds up to 16,384. So we'll put in 128 by 128. Changes are saved. 
and now the map will be the size of the specified dimensions and the user is free to roam the map and paint it with all the layers Um, it's also possible to disable and enable the grid from the settings menu. So that's just that there, really. And the final feature of Map Work Iteration 1 is Map Exporting. So we go to the Publish button, which is represented by the globe. Select an output format, either JSON or XML, either of will work perfectly fine. This time we'll go for JSON. And we can either uh, include all assets, which are basically all of the uh, images used in this map, or we can exclude them. In this case, I'd like to include the assets. I uh, hit OK. Now, this will take a brief amount of time as I've uh, selected the largest map possible. It does take a little while to upload the uh, results up to the server. Uh, downloading is incredibly fast though, because uh, I uh, zip all of the contents into a nice neat bundle which is basically a zip file full of the uh, map files and the uh, sprites that represent the tiles. Unfortunately uploading is a little bit slow uh, for larger for larger maps. For the smaller maps, uh, single layered, two layers, three layers, that are under about uh, only a few thousand uh, tiles big uh, will upload very quickly. There we go. So now what's happened is uh, the uh, bundle has been delivered to back to the, uh, the client from the server and we have the uh, zip bundle here and if I just click on that I have a file which contains a JSON file, a zip archive that contains a JSON file which is here, all in well formed JSON. As you can see here, just at a glance, you can see new map uh, is the name of the map, which you specified earlier. And various different tile codes. Uh, we'll look, we'll search for one of the properties that we've defined. So if I just go to our properties here, select a map level property, and look for special name. Just type that in. I know this always goes wrong in the search. Here we go, when I do a search, here we go, so special name is the key in one of the properties and the value is dungeon level, as specified in the editor. We can also download this map as a JSON file, sorry, as an XML file, we've already done JSON. Again, repeating the process that we just did, uploading does take a little bit, so I might, have to do, I might do a slight jump cut. And here is the result in XML file. So basically the process of JSON and XML is the same. Uh, we have an images directory here which contains all the content, all the image content, all the tile sets that were, were have been used uh, for each layer. It only loads one, one, one each for the each tile set. Um, if a layer uses multiple tiles you won't get duplicates. Basically everything links to the same thing. Um, that's pretty much it for, for uh, map work iteration one. Um, I've uh, oh, except that of course the uh, the map work editor scales to the size of the screen, so it doesn't really matter what size browser window you use. Uh, the uh, editor scales to the size of the of the um, of the browser window, so it will work on slightly small screens and it'll work great on bigger screens. Finally, uh, it would be great to hear what people think of uh, Map Work Iteration 1. If you have any particular comments, uh, please leave them in the uh, in the uh, comments box below. You'd be doing me a great fa favour if you uh, filled in the questionnaire that uh, will be uh, linked in the description box below. Uh, I can use all of that for uh, my uh, university research. Um, and also to to improve the the uh, <clears throat> the editor later later on when I have time to to work on it after I graduate. So uh, that's that's just about it. Uh, time to round up. Uh, thanks very much. I'll provide more updates in the future. Uh, keep watching the uh, this space and uh, happy editing.